tadi dan untuk membincangkan dengan lebih terperinci saya mempunyai seorang pakar keselamatan penerbangan antarabangsa yang mempunyai lebih 40 tahun pengalaman dalam industri penerbangan Captain John Cox dan beliau juga seorang juruterbang dan kini berada di Washington DC. Hello Captain John. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Uh, thanks for joining us on Astro Awani. Now, uh, it's been almost two days since the MH370 has gone off the radar. And based on your vast experience in the uh, aviation industry, can you give us your analysis on the disappearance of MH370? Malaysian 370 is a very unusual event because it is very rare that uh, after two days we do not know the exact location uh, of the airplane. There's extensive uh, search and recovery um, underway, and I'm confident that we will find the, the airplane and that we will uh, get the recorders and we will learn the cause. But it, it is, uh, it's a slow process, and right now the, the biggest thing is a matter of being patient. Right, Captain, what do you think are the possible scenarios that could have happened on the uh, plane before it has it gone off the radar at approximately 2010? to 10 yesterday we have very little evidence on which to speculate as to cause one of the things that we do know is that whatever occurred apparently occurred pretty quickly um, the and the the lack of communication from the airplane either means that they had an onboard problem uh, or that the pilots were so uh, saturated with uh, their task that they were unable talk to air traffic control so those are the kinds of questions that the investigators are going to look at there is nothing off the table currently about the potential cause it uh, there are there is intelligence and security people that are involved in the investigation that are looking into that aspect the airplane has an extensive and long high safety record that they will look at mechanical issues they will look at the potential operational issues so right now there are almost uh, unlimited possibilities that the investigators will look at we just need to find the airplane to get the evidence to understand what caused it okay John let's look at the uh, backtrack on the, the when the plane disappeared right and it seems that it just disappeared off the radar and what are the chances of that happening and the pilot uh, not informing the ATC the air traffic control the, the fact that there's a device on the airplane known as a transponder and if the airplane is under radar coverage that transponder sends out a code that is unique to this flight and for when that to disappear may indicate a, an electrical problem uh, that was on the airplane that uh, caused this to no longer transmit. And that's something that the investigators will look, uh, certainly look at. As far as the not transmitting to air traffic control, that could mean that they were unable to because of a, a similar electrical problem with the communication radios or that the pilots, the, the demands on the pilot's attention was elsewhere other than talking to air traffic control. If you have a problem on an airplane, talking to air traffic control is not your primary concern. It's maintaining control of the airplane and dealing with the abnormality. So I'm not totally surprised that there was not a, uh, an immediate call to air traffic control if they were, if their attention was diverted elsewhere and they, they were trying to deal with an abnormality. Right, Joy, uh, I think you mentioned that uh, there is a possibility that they went off the radar because of uh, electrical power interference on the transponder. Is there a, a button on, uh, on the cockpit perhaps to turn off that transponder? It is possible to switch the transponder off with a switch in the flight deck. Yes, that, that is possible. And uh, in we're also looking at a lot of uh, situations over here. Uh, given uh, the recent developments, perhaps would that, what would happen if perhaps there's somebody who would try to, say, take over the copy? What are the security measures, the SOPs, that the pilot would have to take? The, there are very strict security procedures in effect. They're reinforced doors. Um, there, are, there is special training that the flight crews go through to ensure the, the safety and security of the flight deck. And uh, those, those vary from airline to airline and from country to country. 
So specifically what uh, the, the security procedures were for Malaysian Airlines, uh, I don't know, and even if I did, because they are classified, I, I wouldn't be able to discuss them. But I do know this, that they are, uh, they are extensively trained to make sure that security issues on the, uh, on the airplane are, are taken into account and that a security level is always maintained. Okay, uh, J uh, John, also, we are s it, it has been two days. We have been doing search and rescues. Uh, nine countries have, have joined operations to do the uh, SAR. And what would be some of the uh, possibilities that we are unable to locate the aircraft? I, I am very confident, very, very confident that we will find the airplane. Uh, we found that the Air France 447 airplane was in much deeper water and much more challenging environments. I think with, uh, in the next day or two, we will find the debris field, and that will begin to tell us the story of Malaysian 370, uh, and whether there was an in-flight breakup, whether the airplane hit the water in, uh, in one piece. The, I don't believe that this, will, this mystery will continue about the location of the airplane much longer. Okay, I'd like to draw this, uh, this incident to perhaps the incident in Air France in 2009. Do you see any similarities or, or what can you tell us about if we would like to draw a parallel to this Air France incident? The only similarities that I see so far is that this was a wide body airplane flying over water at night. And at that point, the similarities uh, in my mind stop. We don't know, uh, there's a difference in the type of airplane there were weather considerations in the Air France uh, uh, accident that uh, are not present with the Malaysian 370 uh, uh, event. So uh, I do not see a lot of parallel other than it's a wide body airplane flying over an ocean at night. Okay. All right, John, given the data available so far, what more do you think can be done to help increase the chances of finding MH370? I think that the assets, particularly the aerial assets, airplanes that are being provided by a number of countries, Singapore, Malaysia, China, the United States, uh, and others, uh, are going to be the key assets. And once we start finding bits and, uh, of debris, then the, the surface ships that those and uh, other countries are providing will, will give us the clues that we need. So I think the assets are there. I think the, the command and control of, the, uh, of those assets uh, is in place. I think it is uh, very noteworthy of the international cooperation that is underway here, and that is, that's important, but it's also noteworthy. So I think the assets to find the airplane are there. It's just a matter of for all of us to be patient and let these experts do their job. All right, thank you so much, Captain John Cox, for joining us on Astro 1E. My pleasure.